Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. This is Eric. I apologize, my voice is a little deeper today. I've been kind of sick the last uh, couple days with my daughter. Um, but maybe this will make my uh, <laughs> voice a little easier to listen to. I don't know. <laughs> so, got an exciting video for you guys today. We are going to be going through a couple things. Some news updates uh, regarding Flux, uh, Forge, and the Flux Web UI that Pinocchio put out. Some news around that and kind of what they're doing. So, in the last video I, I put out, introduced you to the Flux Web UI that Pinocchio created as kind of a, it was almost kind of like a stopgap before the bigger systems could really catch up like like Forge, uh, web, Forge Web UI. Um, the first version they came out with worked really well. It was interesting. I could get my renders done in about 30 seconds, as you saw in that video. And then there was an update, and suddenly everything just stopped. Like, I guess there were, you know, I started getting errors or just wouldn't render at all. Uh, tried removing it, reinstalling it, and still the same thing. I even got on, you know, I'm on their Discord and, and started connecting with Morpheus and uh, asking him about it. He had me do a few things as a suggestion, but just could never get it down to under like 300 and some odd seconds for a render. And on my system, that's just unacceptable. I, I, uh, um, when I was getting those 30 second renders, that's kind of what I was expecting. So, but here's the good news. For those of you who follow my channel, you know I love the Forge Web UI. It just offers a lot of features, a lot of functionality. It's pretty easy to use. But I like it because it also has an API backend that uh, allows me to tie into it with my, my front end, uh, which a lot of you use, Zero Gen Forge. I know it's got kind of the same name, but it just made sense. Anyway, they've been doing some updates. They just hit the scene and started working like crazy to make it so that they you could use Flux in the Forge web UI. And so this video is going to go through and show you uh, how to get that up and going, where to put the models, where to get the model, the models that do work with it. There are some specific ones. And we'll go through and do and play. We'll, we'll uh, do some examples. We'll show you how to get text to work really well. Uh, how to do things like this scene here with the the rocks. It's pretty fun. Uh, working with different art mediums, how to get some decent results. We'll go through all that and uh, make it a really good video. So let's get started. So I'm just going to start off by saying that uh, if you're not using it, you need to get a hold of Stability Matrix. So Stability Matrix is a package manager, and let me uh, let me bring it up here for you so you can see it. It's right there. And it allows you to install multiple uh, image generation packages. I was going to say diffusion image generation packages. It's kind of what they are. And it allows you to manage them. And what it does is it maintains a, a repository of your models in a single file. So it's not duplicating those checkpoints, eating up your hard drive space. And so it uses things like sim links and other things too unify that even creates a unified folder for all your images if you create images in comfy ui they'll be stored i'm pretty sure in the same location that like the ones you would store in stable diffusion would be in so what we're going to do let me show you where to get this so stability matrix great program very well supported comes out with lots of updates free to use uh, you just download it from here. It's from lycos.ai, L-Y-K-O-S.ai. You'll click the link to download it. You'll pick your release. Uh, usually just do the stable one. Okay. And once you get it downloaded, it's going to go into your downloads folder or wherever you decide to download it and just double click it. It'll install. Okay, so you click the link to download. When you download it, it's going to put it into your downloads folder, like I said before, and it downloads it as a zip file. So it looks something like this. Okay. The executable is within this zip file, so you probably want to just extract it. So we're just going to extract all, and that's fine. Gives you this right here. You'll run that. Give it a second. It may give you a 
uh, Windows security warning. Um, if it does, uh, you can click more information and click run anyway. And when it does run, you'll be presented with a screen that looks like this. So this is the stability matrix interface and what it comes up with first here is where you want to install it to. So for this one here, I've already got it installed. I'm not going to actually go through it. The reason I'm bringing this up is the one important factor you want to make sure you click in here is go ahead and enable portable mode. The reason for this is because um, it just makes it easier to back up, to manage everything, and to restore it if something goes wrong. If you don't do portable mode, there's other things it installs elsewhere in the system, and then reinstalling can be a little more cumbersome. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that. Uh, yeah, we're going to exit the application right now. Like I said, I've already got it installed. We're going to go ahead and bring that up here in just a minute. So once you get that installed, you're going to bring up the interface here. Don't worry about this right here. The one button you're going to want to pay attention to here is this right here. This is your packages button. Then you're going to click add package. And again, Stable Diffusion Web UI Forge Edition is what you're looking for. If you download Stability Matrix, just a little side note, just make sure it doesn't say there's an update over here. You want to make sure it's fully updated. Uh, the branch is main. It's always main on this one. You can go to advanced options. You can pick a commit. So you can go back to a previous commit if something's wrong with it. Okay. But most of the time, you're not going to need to worry about this. It should automatically be on Simlink, CUDA, and then whatever the latest commit is. Name it whatever you want. Display the display name and then click install. When it gets finished installing, you'll be presented with something like this. It doesn't look like um, green. These are because I'm running some other ones right now. Um, but if we, I'm going to stop this right here. It'll present you with something that looks like this. Now, depending on the video card you have, there are some settings that you may want to change. I do have some settings down here. Uh, I will put these, I have a, so just so people know, I have an RTX, an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti card with 12, 12 gigs of VRAM. And there are certain settings in here that help with this. And I'm going to show you the web page as well that talks about, um, or at least where you can look up and read about this a little bit. I'll make my command line available, uh, everything except for the username and password authentication side of it. But everything else in here you can leave default. Just leave everything else default. It's nice that they add this in here so that you can uh, just copy and paste it in. Once it's done installing, or the initial install, you're going to click launch. But what we're going to do first is we're going to go grab, or at least show you what we're going to do with Flux. I'm going to leave this off right now. We're going to go over here. So what we're looking for, sorry, not this. Sorry, no, this is it. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is go to GitHub. And you're going to be looking for Stable Diffusion Web UI Forge. It's by Elias Viel. I think is how you pronounce it. And then what you're going to do is go to Discussions. And really, it's going to be this very first one. Major update, bits, by, bits and bytes, guidelines, and flux. This will have a lot of explanation about how flux works, how they were able to get it to work in Forge, and how they're able to get it to work on systems with video cards that have less than 12 gigs or, or even less than 8 gigs of VRAM. They give a bit of an animated GIF here showing some of the new settings that they have. But if you scroll down, you have two checkpoints. These are the ones that they recommend you grab. This top one here is kind of the main one. That's the one that you recommend using because it's going to be the faster one. But you can get the full FP8 version. Don't ask me to really explain the difference between like FP8, NF4, that kind of thing. He does actually go into it quite a bit here. A lot of technical information that if you're interested in reading about this, it might bring you up to speed on the in-depth reasoning behind FP8, NFA. It's really just 
um, different ways of interfacing with the AI model so that you get a quicker response. So if we scroll down here, see as you can see for GPUs with six or eight gigs, you can you'll get a speed up and whatnot. So something else I should mention about Stability Matrix, it does handle the installation of everything you need to run this. Things like Git, uh, Python, and PIP, and all those other things. It handles all that. This is what makes Stability Matrix so nice. It makes it so easy to be able to get into this and use it. So let's scroll down. And so those models, let's just go over this real quick. You download those models, and we're going to put them... I'll show you the folders that we put these in. So when you install Stability Matrix, you're going to have a root folder that looks like this. I don't need that. So this is the original installer, and what it does is it creates a data folder. Inside that data folder are, you have centralized image folder, your models folder, and your packages folder are the two that you're really going to be, or the three you're going to really be paying attention to, but mostly the packages. The models Definitely, because that's kind of where you're going to be putting everything. But I, I kind of go through the packages because it makes me feel better when I go into, say, here and then go to the models folder like I would if it was just a native install of, of the web UI. But one thing you're going to notice is on the, all the folders, there's little arrows, and these indicate sim links. So all these are really just shortcuts. It's a type of shortcut, I know. Uh, that point to those central, the central models folder uh, in Stability Matrix. Those two files, when you download them, you're going to download them and put them under your Stable Diffusion folder. And I try to create subfolders for the different models. I know I got a lot of models here. I got to go through and finish organizing, but I've created one specifically for Flux. So you come in here, and I've got these two models in here. Aside from these two models, there are a couple of other models that you may need to get a hold of. I know I, I needed them for the, like the Comfy UI install as well as the, um, the Flux web UI that Pinocchio came out with. Uh, there's a VAE and then there's also a, um, what do you call it, a clip model. Um, the VAE is this one right here, the AE.SFT, and then the clip model, or the, uh, where is it? Well, I can't remember where this is. Hold on. Never mind. I guess I don't need that particular one, and I'm not sure if I need the VAE one either. But just in case, uh, you can actually grab those from my Google Share. If you just go to share.zerophase.com and there's a models folder, you can go in there and grab both those. The VA will go here. The clip one, just keep it for later in case you use it in a different package, but I don't think you'll need it. The two large models, go ahead and grab them from the uh, web page here. Just grab them, download them from here. Put those in your models folder. Again, organize them. Create a folder called Flux if you want. Once you put those in, then you can get your package, your installation, up and running. So we're going to go ahead and click Launch here. Once the back end's loaded, you'll come up to this. And you'll be presented with a lot of new options. So they've made it so that you they have like four different selections here that will configure the interface based on the type of model that you're selecting or you can just select all and it'll make all the options available okay. we'll be working with flux the options it gives you you can actually specify the uh, the bit type I would just recommend leaving it on auto it works great the swap method Read the page. He does describe this. You can experiment with this. Honestly, I found leaving it on Q works great. Not going to worry about it. Swap location. This is 
to explain this simply, this is going to be the difference between swapping it between RAM or swapping it between a swap file on a hard drive. Now, depending on what you're doing, typically, and now he says that the shared one could be faster. Honestly, I'm going to say CPU was faster for me because swapping it into RAM, I think, is going to be much quicker. That's, you know, coming from the uh, v, uh, VRAM, going into regular RAM is a lot quicker than going even to my solid state hard drives. So I will just leave everything on default. Now, when you select your model, do the NF4. You can mess around with the, uh, was it the uh, FP8? It is slower. It'll work, but it is slower. I use this one right here because it gives me the uh, renders in about 30 seconds or less, and it works great. Everything else, so there's a couple of limitations. You don't get a negative prompt because this model has not been trained on negative prompts. Now, he does talk about in the website, um, I believe it's down here a little bit, uh, like this distilled config scale and how I, I, I didn't quite understand. I didn't read too much into depth on it, but uh, he, I would read through this whole thing. He goes into a much better explanation about the queuing, the async, setting up your system. If you're going to be using um, the shared, he goes into describing how to set up your system to automatically manage that, that shared swap file. If you're using a regular platter mechanical drive, I would definitely not use that option. The other thing I've noticed in messing with this, uh, the only sampler, at least that I've tried so far, or well, that, that works out of the ones that I've tried so far, is Euler. And keep it on simple. Uh, Laura's and some other things are probably not going to work at this point. I don't have a lot of news on that. A lot of this is so new, it's just coming out at rapid pace and we're trying to keep up with it. Outside of that, that's it. Everything's ready to go. It should be ready to go. <laughs> I know, I say that tongue in cheek because there's going to be people who go through and install this and end up running into some issues. So uh, if you do run into some issues, definitely double check this page. He does detail a lot of things um, as best he can. And I'm, honestly, in the amount of time that these guys put this out, blows me away that they're even able to come up with a document like this that really goes into detail on it. So let's try it out. Let's get a prompt here. I'm just going to generate a random prompt. Copy that. Paste that in. I'll show you how, how long it takes here. In fact, let's go ahead and let's hit this again and show you. There we go. Loading the model. Should be a lot quicker this time because I don't have the other installation running. Oh yeah, that was a lot faster. So we're doing about one and a half iterations a second. We're doing 20 steps. And as you can see, the combined total will come out to about 30 seconds for this. I've got mine set to show the uh, image being generated in real time. I always like doing this because then if I don't like it, I can interrupt it, cancel it, skip it, whatever. Oh, something you might want to be aware of in whether you're using Automatic 11.11 or Forge, when you're generating an image, uh, at least this works most of the time, I think there's certain instances where it doesn't, where if you click the interrupt button, it will say interrupting, but if you click it again, it forces it to stop. So just a quick tip there. So let's get another render going here. So again, not quite as fast as, say, using the online Hugging Face interface. But for those of us who like to keep our data private and not deal with having to worry about going to a website, this is absolutely awesome. I love this. And I'm going to set this up, and I'm going to show you how to set this up so you can access it over a network as well. All right. Great oil painting. Mixed media painting, interesting. Great colors. So, that's it. I mean, you're ready to go. A uh, couple of things uh, that I like to do once I get my installation done is get the aspect ratio helper installed, get my image browser set up, and those are all extensions that are installed like 
any other extension. You can go to available, type in aspect ratio, helper. Uh, you can find the extension, the link to it's right here. Um, but honestly, again, just do a search for it under the available. Just load it from here. Do a search for aspect ratio helper. It's just a nice extension to have to be able to select pre-made aspect ratios and or uh, putting in and entering in your own aspect ratios. So I want to go through and just experiment and show you some of the things that I figured out dealing with um, prompting the Flux AI uh, dealing with like say different medium types. I mean this thing's really good at a lot of esoteric mediums and one of you know one of the ones I like is paper quilling. Um, in fact let's just come over here we're going to type in uh, paper quilling style image of a know, fantasy forest with a unicorn. So an, I'm going to show you a couple different things. Right now I've got my prompt generator set to stable diffusion style. We're going to switch this over to Dali. I found that this one, the prompts it generates are actually very effective when it comes to flux. Generate those prompts. That long. So it gives you the prompts. And the reason I say that is the stable diffusion prompts, as you saw, tend to be very um, structured, medium, central, or primary focus of the image, composition surrounding uh, scenery, possibly lighting, that kind of thing. With the Dali one, it's more narrative driven. It's like telling a story. Uh, but this prompt generator is designed to fit everything you request within a certain length or to try and keep in with that. It might get a little longer, it might get a little shorter or whatever, but uh, it does a pretty good job. So we're gonna grab this. We're gonna show you some paper quilling on this. So. Paper quilling is an interesting one. It gives you kind of some depth. This one, it's interesting. The paper quilling effect on this one isn't as strong. It's still there, but it looks pretty good. It gives you that weird depth and almost like a, a diorama fill. Okay, finally got it up here. It was interesting. Copy that over. And there we go. Let's see. That was supposed to be. What was that supposed to be? Textile. So what it did is it did the textile as that. So we're going to simplify this prompt. We're going to do textile. I don't know if I should do style. This is what we're figuring out. Style image of a rug with an image of a country, town, and mountains with billowy white clouds and a sunset. So we're trying to put in details, multiple details on it to really test its ability to adhere to the prompt. Yeah, that's more what I was thinking. Gives you something more like what you would see on <laughs> a textile style image. You can specify things like cross stitch and um, various things like that, and it'll give you some really cool images. Let's dive into using text. This is really the big focus that has been on Flux, its ability to manage text. Um, as an example, let me show you something I've been playing around with today. We're going to do a uh, uh, image of a. Let's see, no, no, no. Let's do this. Comic book style image of a surprised woman with a dialogue bubble above her head that says. And I've been experimenting around with using either double quotes or single quotes. Not really sure there's a difference, but um, we're just going to use double quotes. It, I, I, through my experimentation, it makes it. I feel like it's 
it helps the AI really isolate what the words you want are. So we're doing it this way, and I'm going to show you a different way to do it because the AI does pay attention to what's at the beginning of the prompt more so than it does at the end of the prompt. And if you're using long prompts, that does come into effect. So we're going to say, uh, it's just taking over the world. Now, I'm not going to say it will get this on the first try. We'll try a couple times if it doesn't, but it's, a, it's quite a bit of text. But I have actually tried with more text, and it worked great. So we're going to try this and uh, see if it gets it. <laughs> it did a pretty good job. Uh, it does have the one A in there. Uh, I would not re-render this. This is like a fantastic image. I love the way that looks. What I would actually do is take this into inpainting, just inpaint that A out. Um, even go so far as to just slightly move this over in another program. Sometimes it's not worth it to re-render it because you're still rolling the dice. You may not get the image you like mixed with the words you want. But that did a great job getting that. One of the, the other styles. Now, we can try something like this. We're going to put grab this right here the, where it says dialogue bubble above her head that says, and then we're going to go control X. We're going to take that out, put that at the beginning. And then we're going to get rid of this and generate that. This one wasn't bad. Flux is taking taking over the world. So, I mean, you could fix that super easy. Let's go over here. Flux, let's do this. <laughs> It's a bird. It's a plane. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I just want to see what that. I love the styling on that too, by the way. The it's it pops. I mean the colors just pop on that. Yeah, that one nailed it. It's a bird. It's a plane. <laughs> this text thing has been so fun to experiment with. I can't tell you the number of images I've gone through. And, and yeah, I'll regenerate them multiple times until I get the one I want. And it's mostly about layout, too. And they'll start introducing more and more options. We're seeing this with Comfy UI, where they now have like a control net model, I think, that will integrate with uh, Fluxus. And it's going to start giving us more and more control over uh, the image, characters in the image, image style, that kind of thing. This is an exciting time. Um, and it's a big deal too to be able to actually do this suddenly makes stable diffusion or these diffusion models the open source ones so much more valuable uh, and even better to work with because you have multiple platforms free platforms that you can use to to manipulate them or to create image with them, with images with them let's do one more uh, here's another one I, I really like so we're gonna do movie poster style titled text what kind of a movie should we do um, let's do this flubby in flub land so one of the things I have noticed is that flux handles things like hyphens exclamation points as you can see in this image here it got the exclamation points and in other experiments I've done I've used dashes uh, dates uh, I created a tombstone uh, you know uh, it was like a, a picture of a tombstone that had my name uh, here lies my name and I put the greatest dad of all time or something like that and then and then I in a separate text request in the same prompt I put the dates you know from then to then and created the image and nailed it like the first time. A lot of text, a lot of custom requests. I sent it to my wife. She didn't like it that much. <laughs> and uh, so it will handle things like dashes. And now after the request for the text, now we describe what we want the image. Actually, let's do this at the top in bold. Uh, let's do this in bubbly style lettering. 
I haven't used the word lettering much, but I think it'll help. Now we can describe what we want in the image. Uh, we want a rotund, cartoonish, um, blue monster centered with a amorphous landscape surround in the background. Very colorful and child cartoon style. Let's render that out, see what we get. Although one thing I want to do, we're going to interrupt this. And yeah, I mean, if I already tell, that's going to be awesome. So we're going to switch this around. I want this to actually be more por portrait. So we're going to do, yeah, let's do a, a 16 by nine. Now let's generate it. I am so used to Stable Diffusion just not being able to do text. I mean, every time I see this, I'm just floored that it gets it. It got it the first time and held to my prompt. I mean, I really didn't do much detail in it, you know, but it did hold to the prompt. We got the blue rotund character and kind of an amorphous <laughs> surrounding <laughs> landscape in the background. But that is, that's great. That is awesome. You know, other people might have different opinions about it, but it's just working with with diffusion models for as long as I have and always being frustrated with trying to put text in. And they came out with some LoRa's and some other things. And SDXL kind of fixed it, like you could kind of do text. And I've been able to do some text with it. Mostly it was like black text, which you could put on stuff. And, and it helped with the LoRa's. But man, it was like... It almost felt like you were, you know, to get what you wanted was like winning the lottery. It was really bad. And hitting the generate button, there's almost this trauma. <laughs> I guess you could call it that. It's almost this trauma like, crap, it's not going to work. Crap, it's not going to work. And then when it works, the first time, you, you, you question yourself like, did I do something wrong or did I do something right? It's really weird feeling. It's really weird feeling. So... Anyway, that's kind of a movie poster style you could do. There's lots of different styles I've done um, that are just uh, uh, wild. And uh, let's see here. What else can we do? You know, one of the things that, that I will uh, kind of bring out here is, is pla placement of the text. As you notice here, I specified at the top in bubbly style lettering, and it did. It did that. Like, if I did this at the bottom let's see if it, it follows this pretty good especially when you put it at the beginning of the prompt so let's give that a try and just see if it changes it up and puts the text at the bottom now typically with movie posters they the titling is at the top so there's going to be a bias towards that but let's see oh no look at that <laughs> it, it did it exactly again that's the trauma it's like i'm expecting it to put it at the top you know and because of, just because of the bias of how it's trained on movie posters in general, you would think it would put it up there. But it didn't. It put it at the bottom, just like I requested. Good old flubby. Even with the crooked teeth, it's awesome. I think I got a new, favorite new character. Maybe I'm making my mascot. Who knows? <laughs> Oh, there's going to be so much fun working with this, and we're having a ton of fun on our Discord channel, um, coming up with new ideas, how to use the text, uh, that kind of thing. Let me see if I can pull up some of the images I've done. So I almost forgot to show you guys some of the images I've done. So this will be kind of an awkward insert near the end of the video. And uh, just you know, messing around on my phone. These are ones that I've generated most, most of them with the online platform. But it's really just to kind of show the capabilities of what it can do. Did this image for um, one of my sisters and her family.
just testing out comic book capabilities. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Miniatures and yeah, it's just so much fun. <laughs> when I okay, I when I generated this image, I was looking for Abraham Lincoln holding a rifle, riding a moose, right? You know, kind of the whole like Putin riding a bear kind of thing. <laughs> I generated a couple of images and and hit this one, and I just started laughing because the moose has this. <laughs> <laughs> mouth and teeth like like man he's gonna tear something apart like it was just funny as all get out i this this model does the hell you know you've probably seen a lot of the I, it was kind of a test image to see how good a model is how good it can produce a product image and or at least like the hamburger fries and drink image and i kid you not this one nails it man it gets the the sauce on the bun down here. This one's an upscaled image, I believe. The name over here is a little blurred out, which is okay. Um, did this one for my brother and his wife. Uh, again, just looks absolutely amazing. It looks so real. I mean, the only way you could tell this wasn't real in, in, some, in a, a little bit of the sense is sometimes the lettuce intersects with some, certain things. You know, it, this one actually did a great job. Help, I'm trapped. Um, this one I tried to specify etching on the glass. I think it did a pretty good job. Um, I mean, I've done glass etchings before. Uh, it's a little off, but eh, it still looks good. Again, just prompt adherence. You know, an elven type uh, woman, elegant, standing on an asteroid over a planet. Uh, very cool stuff. Oh, that was another one I was going to show you guys. was uh, doing a t-shirt um, like design. It, ha it handles those f so phenomenally. You could even you, you could specify your color preferences. This was kind of random. I just had dinosaur with the words bite me below it in a t-shirt graphic design. And it kind of picked the colors. Same with this one. Very cool. This was supposed to say on the hunt. Um, I think I went in and impainted this out in a different image and upscaled it. But I just got rid of the fawn at the top and it turned it into a great image. My brother reached out to me today. He's like, hey, what was that new model called? And so I did this and sent it to him. Uh, again, single render, didn't take me uh, in multiple renders, just told it what I wanted with the comic book look and the bubble up above that says it's called Flux. <laughs> Landscape modeling, like this was cool. It just blended it so nicely. It's a lot like those, uh, I don't know if it's like a control net thing where people were interfacing like word or uh, like images into the landscape, that kind of thing. It's kind of cool that it can do this this level of it again just kind of throwing something at my brother uh another movie poster style i kind of got thinking back on that old disney movie the black hole and decided to try and create something a little more modern but with the same yellow black letters or the yellow lettering i tried to get it to follow the swirl kind of like it does in the original uh, movie poster couldn't quite get it to do that i got it to do like an arch and kind of curved at one point but i settled on this one and this one right here i thought this one was pretty cool pretty cool honestly i would love to see a remake of that movie very it would be very interesting to see how a more modern take on it uh this is more what the paper quilling looks like uh if you know done right again with a shorter prompt the prompt i used earlier in the video was way too long when you add too many details it tends just to create a more realistic image or blending other features that's it so just some examples um i am working it, it's been a little frustrating i don't I purposely created this interface, my zero gen interface with the image generation capabilities. So I didn't necessarily need to go back and use um, the web UI interface. One of the reasons why is I got kind of tired of resetting all the settings and moving around, trying to make sure I got everything right and switching over here. Oh, this is another thing where I'm going to go through and learn all the new features in the web UI forge because they got some cool stuff going on dealing with like transparencies and things like that. So uh, I'll learn up on that. We'll do another video. But um, remembering all the things here, when I just want to simply create an image, 
get the image I want, upscale it, in paint it. I did all that through here so that I could do it easy. And I'm glad I can share it with people. Right now the image server is offline because I'm doing this video, but um, yes, it uses my computer here as the backend image gen server. And uh, doing this video, normally I would keep it running, but because I'm using the uh, Flux stuff, I have to use a separate Forge installation uh, separate from my main installation. Once I get done with this video, um, I'll be spinning up the other one so that they can people can start using it again. Um, but hopefully, and I've been in contact or you know watching the posts and everything on the WebUI Forge GitHub. They are currently working towards uh, fixing certain API aspects and the extension that I use to interface with it from my front end. Uh, does not work in this newer version, not yet. And I've reached out to that, the people who do that extension as well, and they're uh, just bringing it to their attention, and hopefully they'll start working on that and update it. If not, I may be building my own queuing system and whatever on my back end who handle the jobs that get, that get submitted. So that's it. That's really uh, what, what we've got, and it's super exciting that we've got this, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it wasn't too long, and look forward to... Uh, your comments, questions. Uh, if you want to join my Discord, uh, go ahead and put a request down in the comments below. Uh, we got a lot of people on there uh, helping find some free resources and advice and all sorts of stuff around Flux and a lot of other things too. We've got a pretty good community. Um, they've been great. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe and uh, you know, follow my channel for more videos. I'm gonna try and come out with some more here. This is exciting stuff with Flux. It kind of changed up a lot of things and disrupted a lot of things. So we'll talk to you later.